Huandoi is a fearsome mountain located in the Huascaran Range in the Peruvian Andes. The Huandoi Massif is renowned for its breathtaking and steeply slanted blade-like slopes that jut out into the sky from the depths of the gorgeous glacial valleys below, as the massif features four distinct summits that are often described as seemingly forming the shape of a giant fireplace when viewed from afar. Huandoi's true summit, the northernmost summit, tops out at a height of 20,870 feet with the other three summits, Huandoi West, Huandoi South, otherwise known as Huandoi Sur, and Huandoi East, topping out at heights of 20,853 feet, 20,210 feet, and 19,685 feet respectively. Within the mountaineering community, Huandoi Sur is regarded as amongst the world's most difficult peaks to successfully ascend, as the peak is rife with sections of highly technical climbing, up long stretches of near vertical mixed rock and ice climbing, exposed and at the mercy of the dry, frigid winds of the Andes. Furthermore, much like many of the world's most difficult mountains that I've covered on the channel previously, along with requiring a high level of technical mountaineering skill to make an attempt at its summit, Huindoi Sur's summit hopefuls also must assume the near-constant threat of a sudden, uncontrollable, and often arbitrary death, as the huge seracs that loom above the climbers threaten to break loose and unleash a momentous barrage of massive chunks of ice weighing tons at any time, and stretches of loose, corroded, rotten rock in combination with the extremely steep terrain make for a hair-raising affair for summit hopefuls as well, as every fall along the way could carry the potential that a few poorly placed anchors could send the climbers plummeting down Huandoi Sur's steep slopes and to their deaths. Therefore, because of the inherently risky and extremely technically difficult nature of the ascent, attempting to ascend Huandoi Sur is only an appealing prospect to the least risk-averse climbers within mountaineering's upper echelon, a description that perfectly fits both climbers featured in today's video. In late August of 2015, two top-level Russian climbers arrived at the foot of the fearsome southern face of Huandoi Sur, as the duo sought to establish a new line up the southern face, which is infamous for its difficulty, being described by the first expedition that unsuccessfully attempted to ascend it as, quote, unjustifiably dangerous, and the southern face was not successfully summited until the year 1976 where three routes were successfully ascended to reach the peak summit, an ascent up the main pillar by a team of Japanese climbers, then an ascent by a team of Italian climbers, who partly followed the Japanese route before venturing off onto the main rock wall for the latter half of the ascent, and finally an ascent by a French team who just sent it and made a full exposed ascent of the main wall. The duo of Russian climbers that would be attempting this new route up the southern face consisted of a man named Alexander Ruchkin and a man named Vyacheslav Ivanov, both of whom were extremely experienced mountaineers with a plethora of relevant experience to aid them in their ascent. Notably, Alexander Ruchkin was a pivotal member of the Russian expedition team I mentioned in my previous video about Janu that made the incredible and historic first ascent of the unrelenting several thousand meter big wall that is Janu's imposing north face in 2004, with Ruchkin's crucial contributions along the uppermost stretches of the climb, earning him a Pialette d'Or award for his efforts. However, this historic ascent was somewhat clouded by controversy as the large Soviet siege-style Big Wall expedition on the face left a large amount of equipment still embedded in the face, and thus spoiled the challenge and potentially impeded the paths of future summit hopefuls 
a controversy very similar in nature to the controversy faced by David Lama after his ascent of Cerro Torre, which I covered more extensively on my video about David. In the immediate months following this historic ascent of Janu, Ruchkin would also attempt to ascend the infamously difficult northeastern face of K1, which I also made a video about a couple weeks back. However, if you're a frequent viewer of the channel and have seen that video, you're probably aware of the outcome of this attempt, as an ascent of K1's northeastern face has proved too great a challenge for any and all mountaineers that have attempted to ascend it, as, at least as of the time of making this video, the face remains unclimbed and one of the scarce few crown jewel first ascents left in present day top level Himalayan mountaineering. The successful ascent of Janu's north face, followed by the subsequent contrasting failure of the northeast face of K1 ascent attempt, and perhaps also in conjunction with the criticism lobbied at the Janu north face team, seemingly had begun to cause Ruchkin to make a shift away from the large, Soviet siege-style big wall expeditions as he began to prefer climbing peaks alpine-style, either solo or with a small team. For those of you that might be unaware of this terminology, alpine-style climbing is a style of ascending mountains where the climber tries to make the ascent as quickly as possible, forgoing the arduous and time-consuming processes of establishing fixed camps and hauling gear to said camps of expedition climbing. Furthermore, alpinists carry only supplies for a few days along with them, resting in bivvies overnight should the ascent take longer than a day. As Alexander Ruchkin began to favor these alpine-style ascents, the other man accompanying him for this 2015 ascent of Huendoy Sir, Vyacheslav Ivanov, began to pair up frequently with Ruchkin to attempt these challenging ascents in the years prior, as the men were both extremely motivated and hard-working, high-level climbers that appreciated the challenge posed by these lesser-known, yet highly dangerous and extremely difficult to ascend peaks dotted across the globe. Together, the duo had accomplished several impressive ascents, a true testament to the pair's synergy, and thus, again, they would team up late that fateful August in 2015 for another such attempt on another such mountain, who Doi Sir. On August 20th, 2015, the duo of climbers began their ascent of who Doi Sir's south face, reaching an approximate altitude of 5,300 meters by that evening, where they would bivy for the night. Over the next two days, the pair would endure multiple pitches of highly technical, vertical, and at times overhanging climbing as they fought for every vertical meter, reaching an altitude of 5,552 meters on the evening of August 22nd. However, while Ruchkin and Ivanov had made relatively decent progress up their new route over the first two days of climbing, this trend would come to an end on the 23rd, as the men struggled to fix their ropes, progressing just 20 further vertical meters over the course of the 23rd, before they realized they were following a line up a blind alley and would be forced to withdraw back to their bivy site at 5,552 meters on the evening of the 23rd, with no vertical progress made at all. The following day, August 24th, would prove to be another frustrating one for the duo, as much like the day prior, the men, demoralizingly, had not made any further vertical progression and were again forced to bivy for a third night at an altitude of 5,552 meters. The next day, August 25th, the pair laboriously fought to gain a vertical progression of about 30 meters, bivying for the night at an altitude of 5,580 meters on the evening of the 25th. As the men entered the sixth day of their climb on August 26th, they again made slow and labored vertical progress towards the summit, gaining 60 meters over the course of the 26th, setting their bivvies at an altitude of 5,640 meters 
on the evening of August 26th. The next day, on August 27th, Ivanov and Ruchkin continued their ascent at a glacial pace, and by the early afternoon, had ascended approximately 25 meters from their last bivy site. As the men were attempting to set bolts across a stretch of sheer, crackless stone, they realized that the stone along this route for a long stretch was actually rotten behind its surface and would not be able to reliably support any weight. For the pair of already exhausted, frustrated, and demoralized climbers, this discovery would prove to be a devastating one, and the men concluded that they could not reach the summit on this attempt, and reluctantly began their descent after making a phone call home to Russia with the team's satellite phone to inform the outside world of their withdrawal. Six days later, on September 2nd, 2015, following their prior call via their satellite phone back to Russia on August 27th, neither Ivanov nor Ruchkin had been heard from since, and so a team of Peruvian rescue climbers were dispatched to Huendoy Sur to search for the missing men. Not long after their arrival at the peak, the team discovered the lifeless bodies of both Ruchkin and Ivanov near the lower portion of the face, at an altitude of approximately 5,300 meters. The following day, on September 3rd, 2015, both bodies were recovered and sent back to St. Petersburg, Russia for burial. Both men's bodies showed signs that they had clearly suffered blunt force trauma. However, what exactly had caused the men's deaths remains a mystery. It has been speculated that perhaps the pair were struck by falling rock or ice from above, or as due to the necessity of frequent tandem climbing, both men would be roped together, and thus, if one suffered a fall and picked up enough momentum that neither would be able to arrest the fall, it could have caused both men to plummet to their deaths. In wake of the men's passings, the Russian and international mountaineering communities mourn the loss of two elite driven and accomplished mountaineers that mysteriously lost their lives while attempting to climb a peak so difficult and daring that few others could even fathom attempting it. Thank you all for watching.